Hello everybody, good afternoon, welcome to the United Stands. I'm Mark Goldbridge with a quick two o'clock update on everything that's going on around Manchester United, transfer news, sale news. We've got the lot and there's a lot to talk about. Where shall we start? Well, we're going to talk about centre-backs. Uh, we're going to talk about a centre-back I don't really know much about, actually. Lenny Yoro, uh, currently playing in France. I believe he's playing for Lille. I think it's Lille. It's Lille or Leon. I think it's Lille. Uh, also, Tadebo, potential blow with him joining a Premier League rival. We'll talk about the latest on that. Um... Also, what is the situation with Manchester United and centre-backs in January? Will we actually buy one? I suppose that is a relevant point. We had Fabrizio. You can see the interview from yesterday with Beth where he was talking about what's, prob what's probable in the January transfer market. And he did mention centre-backs. So where do Manchester United sit on centre-backs when you consider this has just come out... Um, a couple of hours ago from Rob Dawson, uh, Manchester United are not expecting uh, to make major signings in January in part because of financial fair play concerns. Um, I can't speak, says Ananta, one of our members. Thank you. Welcome to the show. Get your comments in as always. Look, Eric Ten Hag needs players the same as Aston Villa, Spurs, Liverpool, Newcastle. Everybody wants to do business in January. Every Premier League manager wants to do business in January. Can Eric Ten Hag do business in January? I would just put up a warning sign and say that we couldn't afford Amrabat and we had to wait until the very last minute of the January of the August transfer window, of the summer transfer window to get a loan deal done. We didn't have any money. What has changed from August 31st to December the 19th? Nothing. We, we, we are financially as screwed now as we were at the end of August. We, we don't have money available to go and spend £30 million on a player. We're heading into a January transfer window very similar to last year, where we needed a Ronaldo placement. We assumed we were getting Gakpo. Boxing day night, he signs for Liverpool. We thought we might go for Jao Felix. He signs for Chelsea. We end up with Wout Veghorst as our Ronaldo replacement. There is an under, underpinning story here that Manchester United financially don't have a lot of money. Now, what we're hoping is, is that the Sir Jim Radcliffe 25% happens and makes a difference for Manchester United. But there's no necessarily um, guarantee of that happening. And I think what, uh, what, Rob, what Rob Dawson alludes to there is probably correct. Now, in relation to the centre-back situation, because I want to sort of intersperse this with a few other things, we have been linked with a couple of French centre-backs. Now, we'll start off with Tadebo. He currently plays for Nice, uh, 23 years of age. Looks like a really decent centre-back option for Manchester United. Certainly somebody that Ten Hag had on his shortlist last May. Now, whether Ten Hag knew Sir Jim Radcliffe was going to be buying Man United back, back in May, I doubt. So I think that this is a, a player that Ten Hag really liked at centre-back, which just so happens to be a player that plays for a club that Sir Jim Radcliffe owns. This is an open goal. Even Vout Veghorst wouldn't miss this. It's, it's so simple. It's a centre-back that Ten Hag wants playing for a club that Sir Jim Radcliffe owns. How do you mess this deal up? Well, yesterday, reports from France suggests that Ange at Spurs really likes him and they've held positive talks about a January transfer window because Spurs have been left very short at centre-back with the injuries to Van der Ven and the fact that Romero is a hothead who always looks like he's going to get sent off. So Spurs like Tadebo. How could that happen? How could... I, 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 I refuse to believe this. I read the story. I thought, look, it looks, looks quite well sourced. It makes a lot of sense for Spurs. It makes a lot of sense for the player. But how on earth... Do Manchester United not sign Tadebo when it's a player that Ten Hag liked at the start of the summer and it's a player that Sir Jim Radcliffe, who is going to buy part of Manchester United, owns that player and owns that club? And Giovanni says, of course, it's just rumours. But, but, but Giovanni, as much as it's rumours, we must prepare ourselves for these sort of things because the same thing happened with Gakpo last year. Gakpo was an open goal. We needed a forward. He knew Ten Hag. They had the same fucking agent and he signed for our biggest rival. So let's not sit there going, hey, it's just rumours, it'll be fine. It, we know, we know, we know the script. We know how this happens. You look like you're going to sign a player. It looks like it's absolutely nailed on. And then, I mean, I remember, I remember this time, God, how many years ago would it be? I remember this time whenever it happened. Um, somebody in the chat will know. You must be talking three years ago maybe four, literally about this day, three or four years ago, 
Ole Gunnar Solskjaer, in a press conference, being asked about Erling Haaland and why he took a flight to Salzburg. Are you signing Erling Haaland? He could barely contain his smile. It was so obvious that he thought he was going to get Erling Haaland. What happens? He goes and signs for bloody Dortmund. So United have a habit of missing open goal signings. So in relation to Tadebo, for me, it's just such a simple, logical deal to do. And, and it's so simple. But it would not surprise me if he ends up signing for Spurs and we're sat there going open mouthed. How, how has that happened? And the only reason it would happen is because of that money. Where, where does the money come? Where does the money come from? Because Spurs rock into Nice with 30, 40 million quid from the Harry Kane deal and go, there's 30, 40 million quid. Do you want it now? And they go, yeah. And United go, do you take post-it notes and IOUs and, and the money talks and shit walks? So we'll have to wait and see what happens with that. But that could be a concern. And I think this is going to be the problem. Where is the money going to come from? Where is the money going to come from to do business in January? Because financial fair play, we're not going to get, get into that. But basically, Man United spend against revenue the gap's tiny and, and where's the money? And that's the problem. You need to reduce the, reduce the wage bill and sell some players to create the gap to spend money and the revenue. It, it's very difficult. Um, also, just talking about another target here. I mean, Silva at Benfica. Forget about it. Forget about it. Forget about it. We're not going to get that deal done. We're certainly not going to get that deal done in January. He's got a release cause of 100 million quid. They're not going to want to sell him in January anyway. So forget about someone like that. Someone mentioned Branthway to Everton. Again, forget about that for the same reason. You're just not going to do a deal like that. We, we, we're, not, we're not capable of doing that. Um, which leads us into um, this uh, other player that we've been linked to, which is Lenny Yoro. Now, now look, Anasio will cost too much money as well. He's at Sporting Lisbon. Uh, Tamori, again, going to cost too much money. We're talking about January. We're talking about January here. So there is this little centre-back called Lenny Yoro, who's been linked to PSG. He's been linked to Liverpool. He's now being linked to Manchester United. This is a... Look, if we had money and ambition, I would be all over this. He is only just 18. He's only just 18 years old. Only in November. Only just 18 years old. He is um, a regular starter for Lille this season, playing as a centre-back. He's right-footed. He's got an incredible um, stat that his pass accuracy is something like 92% across the season, which is incredible for a centre-back. Um, Lille have slapped a price on him of 40 million quid um, because his contract is up in 2025. So he's only got 18 months left on his contract. Lots of clubs are looking at him. Apparently, Manchester United are looking at him. Um, has got the same agent or is part of the same agency that Ahmad is at. So, look, it's... it's. I mean, somebody just said in the chat, Jared just said, well, Maynou's 18. Why would you not do it? Um, Bruto says he isn't ready for the Premier League. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think it's the sort of deal that Manchester United could do. Um, GW says another unproven talent, but we have been linked to it. But more importantly... Liverpool will probably get him or PSG will probably get him or Real Madrid will probably get him because there have there's been many talented players that come through like this that we don't bother buying anyway. So, look, he's an interesting player, but I don't know what we're going to do in the centre-back situation. I'm starting to think that January really is um, going to be looking very unlikely, isn't it, to buy a player in January in, in, in the centre-back position because... If this is the problem and we don't have any money, then how are we going to do deals like this uh, with with um, Yoro or Tadebo or anybody else? So I, I just don't know. I just don't know. And and, and also, let, let me bring you a little bit more news as well that's come out today, uh, again, in the last hour or so. Uh, around the, and, and this fits in with everything. There is still a slight chance that Sir Jim's Man United takeover could be completed this week, but it's looking likely to be in the new year. The deal is partly being held up due to the complexity of a, of a minority shareholder taking charge of overall football operations. So, yeah, and it will be very complex. And I think that's quite a detailed update. And I think we'd all love to see this deal get done. But this deal directly impacts any deal we want to do in January. Because how can you be talking about taking over the football side of things and then making deals in January before that person's in place? Um, I don't know how strict the UEFA rules or the Premier League rules are, 
logically, if I was Sir Jim Radcliffe and I'm just waiting for the for the ink to dry, I'm talking about let's do this, let's do this, let's do this. But UEFA in the Premier League might be very much monitoring any conversations like that happening. So, I mean, we, we knew Sir Jim Radcliffe had the club by the start of November and he still hasn't got the 25%. So this obviously has a direct impact on January. In, in January. Somebody said to me about three weeks ago, they said, have you ever considered the fact that everything Man United do under the Glazers is extremely, extremely manipulative and planned out? And have you ever considered the fact that they're dragging the deal on this and blaming lawyers because they don't want to spend money in January? And what better... Basically, what they were saying is if this Sajim deal for 25% had been done at the end of November, like most people thought in the international break, there's no excuse not to do stuff in January and get the wheels rolling. If you whack it into the new year or near Christmas, it's a very good excuse to say, well, we just ran out of time to do anything in January and you save yourself some more money. The flip side of that is we ain't getting top four. Uh, what what 35 year old can we get on loan, though, or other castaways? That's where we should be shopping. Uh, the Arnott's bargain basement, says Rory C. Well, you're probably right about that. But I think that uh, Glazers love to frustrate the fans. We never do anything in January, says Nigel. Yeah, well, I think we will do something in January. I just think it's probably going to be more of the outgoing nature than the incoming nature. Uh, I think we... I th my predictions, get your predictions in for the January transfer window, but my predictions are that we will offload somebody we don't want to offload. Now, whether that's going to be Casemiro, Varane or somebody else, I think we will offload somebody to raise some money. I think we'll spend all month trying, huffing and puffing like a, a, a wolf trying to blow down the brick house. I think we'll be trying to remove Sancho and Martial. And I think we'll bring in somebody like a Timo Werner or a Malin or a Garassi on a cheap deal or a loan deal. And I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll bring somebody in. I think it will be probably a goal scorer. Um, I don't see us doing much at centre-back. If, the, if they offload Varane, they might buy Tadebo. But that, for me, is... I mean, that's not really an upgrade. That's just a... I mean, that's, you know, getting rid of Varane, who can do the job now for the next six months, and bringing in Tadebo, who is going to need time to adjust. If anything, that weakens us for the next few weeks. So, yeah, I, I think we will do something. I'm not going to... I'm not going to write... I don't think... I, I think we will do something in January. And I, I, and I think that we have to. But... I look at the what's available and, and, and more importantly, I look at the finances and I go, we're going to have to get very, very creative here. What I would love to do, and I've not heard anybody discuss this, what I would love to do is be in a situation where you've got your CEO, your sporting director in place for January and you go and get two or three players we don't know anything about. I would love that. I'd love Dan Ashworth or Paul Mitchell to be in the club going... Look, I've got a book full of players. Go and get him from him and him. He, he's in Austria. He's in Brazil. He, you know, he's in he's in um, South Korea. Bring them in. That That's what you would want to happen. That's what Dan Ashworth's done at Brighton and Newcastle. That's what Paul Mitchell's done throughout his career. That's what you want to happen. It's very difficult for us as fans to sit here and go, yeah, let's go and get this, that and the other. Because we're, we're, we're going to be thinking logically about 50, 60, 70 million pound players, which we can't afford. But... Again, we've dropped the ball, haven't we? Because this complexity of this deal between the Glazers and Sir Jim has dragged on for so long that we can't do it. And look, the way I imagine the scenario is, I don't imagine a scenario where Sir Jim Radcliffe and the Glazers are sat there hand in hand going, oh, these bloody lawyers. Anyway, let the lawyers crack on. We'll just chat about what we're going to do in January. I actually think it's the Glazers and Sir Jim in conflict about the complexities. Not falling out, but basically Sir Jim saying he wants this, this and this, and the Glazers going, no, you're not having that, that and that. And then, okay, this. I, 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 I think that when, there is this assumption that Sir Jim Radcliffe and the Glazers get on really, really well, and it's the naughty lawyers that are holding up the deal. The lawyers are earning a lot of money for the Glazers and Sir Jim. The reason it's taking so long is because of the complexity of it and the give and take from both sides. So I've cleared the game, says Tommy, and I think that's what's happening. Uh, they are locked in on a deal that they're trying to work out that they can work together on. They're not sat there while the lawyers are doing it going, yeah, let's get rid of Donny, let's get rid of this. I, I, I don't think we're even at that stage at the moment. So it's very difficult to predict anything happening in January when, unless 
call a spade a spade again, if this deal gets announced tomorrow, there is a five, six week period for the Premier League to look at it. So Sir Jim Radcliffe could basically say, I can't do anything in January. I'll start in the summer. I can't do anything in it. I mean, maybe this is what they're doing on purpose. Oh, the deal won't be done until February the 1st. We can't do anything in January. Uh, maybe that's what we're doing here. Um, we will have to just wait and see. We will have to just wait and see uh, what happens with it. Uh, Renate says, please give a like on the video, everyone. Yeah, please do give a, a like on the video. Thanks, everyone, who's been tuning in. Um, interesting. We'll probably pick this up on the 7 o'clock show because there's a few things I want to talk about. I was looking at the odds today. What are your thoughts on this? Odds on Sancho's next club today. You know what's number one? The favourite outcome. He stays and doesn't sign for anyone. I mean, we're not thinking about this, but, you know, apparently Sancho's deep into a uh, GTA 5 save and uh, also an EAFC career mode. And he feels that he can get through till May before he's, uh, he's finished on those. So he may stay till May and wait till the summer and see what he's got better options. I mean, it's worth just dropping it into your head. This assumption that Jaden Sancho is just going to go on January the 1st. Actually, there's a chance where he just goes, no, I'll wait till the summer. I'll have better options there. He might, he might not go in January. He, he might just keep waiting. I don't know what's going on around Sancho and I don't know any, any people who are around Sancho, but I can guess and speculate that he might be going. He might have been sat there for the last few weeks thinking San, uh, Ten Hag will be sacked by Christmas and I'll be back in the team. I don't need to leave. He might look at it now and go, well, he's not going to get sacked by Christmas, but I don't think he'll be in the job in the summer. So I'll wait till the summer. I mean, it makes you want to throw up. You know, imagine if Sancho's thinking, I'll wait till the summer, keep playing my EAFC career mode, and then in the summer, Ten Hag will be gone, Potter might be here, I might get back in the team. I just don't... Uh, I mean, look, you never say never. I mean, for me, this is not the same as Greenwood. Greenwood's a very different situation. And, you know, I don't want to talk about that at the moment. We, 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 will, we will revisit the Greenwood situation into 2024 because there will be a decision that needs to be made, but it's not the same situation. Whether you want Greenwood to play for Man United or not, there's there's different reasons. I don't want to see Jaden Sancho play for Man United again. I think he's deserted us when the ship's sinking. You know, uh, the, the, the pe say what you like about the McTominays, the Maguires, the Brunos, the Rashfords. The you know you can say what you like about them, but at least they're putting the shirt on. Like Sancho's not willing to put the shirt on. I I can't ever trust the player like that. Um, especially when he was backed so well last year when he had to take that three months out. So I just think that, that there's no story he can tell that will make me trust him as a player, I don't think. I mean, a lot, I'm always willing to give someone a second chance, but he's basically down tools because he doesn't want to apologise to an individual when Manchester United is an entity. It's the fans. You know, look at what Varane's done. Varane has just kept his head down and got back in the team and delivered be very easy for him to say, I don't want to play anymore. So, you know, I, I can't see, I can't see it, but I'm just dropping it there. Jaden Sancho may well not leave in January and wait until the summer. I mean, I think it's crazy for a lad of his age to give up a whole season of his career. I mean, it's amazing. You think about people who have these, um, well, look at the, look at the lad for Luton at the weekends who's got this heart condition. Look at people who have career ending injuries. Um, Look at people who never make it, like myself and you. And he sat there as a professional footballer, not playing football, um, when he's got this God-given gift to play for Manchester United and he's a talented player and he sat there not doing it. It's just, I can't comprehend it. I really, really can't. But I'm just saying there is a chance that he might just uh, sit and wait it out till the summer as well. Uh, even though Sancho was a contract, can't he be sacked, says Keel. Well, yeah, you can pay somebody's contract off, but you're never going to do that when you're owned by the Glazers. So Jim only owns 25%. Maybe, I feel like I'm a, I feel like I'm a rapper there. Um, maybe somebody like Qatar or, you know, yeah, maybe someone like Qatar who's wealthy could buy the whole club and say, get out, we'll pay you off, don't want you here anymore. But there's no way the Glazers are going to do that. I don't see, I don't see much of a change in relation to I'm very interested to see what Sir Jim Radcliffe's going to do, but I, I don't see much of a change. You know, I was saying this morning about removing the toxicity and the negativity and clearing the dressing room out. But the only way you're going to do that is if you've got the money to do it. We're still owned by the Glazers. Sir Jim Radcliffe can't say to the Glazers, 
I'm going to spend £60 million paying off these shit players and getting rid of them. No, you're not. Yeah, you're not doing that. I don't, I don't see how we're going to clear the Deadwood, really. I, I, don't, I think it's going to be a very long process to do it. Because uh, he won't have the power and he won't have the finances. With Sancho, if Sir Jim Radcliffe insists on keeping him, I fear that would be the end of Eric Ten Hag, says Rory. But look, you never know. You never know. There might be somebody who's coming into that club who really rates Sancho and wants him in the team. All I'd say to them is you might want to understand what this fan base is all about because these they're the sort of decisions that will cost you. And these are the sort of things that Ineos and Sir Jim need to look at because they're easy wins. If you come into this club and say Sancho's coming back into the team, you're going to upset the fans straight away who are going to look at you and go, all right, maybe this guy is another prat, you know. I, I wouldn't be making decisions like that if I was Sir Jim. I'd be making the easy decision and getting rid of players that don't want to play for the badge. Um, Keel Robinson says, is he not breaching his contract? No pay. I don't know. I don't know. You know, contracts are very complex. I'm sure Sancho's taken legal advice and I'm sure Manchester United have taken legal advice. I mean, look, realistically, is he refusing to come to work? I don't think he's refusing to go to Carrington. He's been pictured there loads of times. I think Ten Hag is not letting him train with the first team until he apologises. So from Sancho's side, he'd say, I'm, I'm happy to train with the first team. I'm happy to play for the club, but I'm not apologising to the manager. So, yeah, how is he breaching his contract? He will say, I'm happy to play for Man United. I'm happy to train with the team, but I'm not apologising to the manager, which is a ridiculous situation, isn't it? Um, you know, I'd maybe need to look at putting these clauses into contracts in the future because they've been left exposed. Um, right. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Quick two o'clock show. Quite like these, um, especially when we're getting around at activity time. Um, seven o'clock show tonight because I'm doing eight o'clock on That's Football for a watch along, which I'm looking forward to. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Make sure you smash a like on the video. Get your comments in below. What do you think about Tadebo? What do you think about Yoro? What do you think about what will be available in the summer, in the January transfer window? What do you think about the and more delays with the Sir Jim Radcliffe deal? Uh, and what do you think about Sancho? Do you think Sancho staying till the summer is a good move for everybody? What, what's that all about? Give us your comments. I'll speak to you at seven o'clock tonight. Take care, everyone.